Hello viewers, today is the filter bag micron experiment. As usual, we're brewing some delicious Korean rice wine and uh, this is a follow-up to my previous video that estimated the micron measurements of filter bags. Here's the one I usually use. It's something around 300 microns. This, uh, this one is, is 200 microns. Next one is around 150. And the finest one is 80 microns. So I have a whole range from around 300 microns to 80 microns. If you like this video, please click that like button and subscribe, and please share this video wherever it is appropriate. So here's a summary of the four different filter bags I'm going to use. And for some of them, I've, like I said, I just estimated the micron measurement of the filtering ability. So let's brew a standard Eyeongju recipe, two-stage recipe. First stage, bombok, and second stage, kodubab. I'm going to make the bombok with 200 grams of rice flour, and bombok is undercooked rice porridge made by pouring boiling water into the rice flour. So I'm using 200 grams of rice flour and 600 milliliters of water. And I pour in the, the boiling water a little bit at a time. It's great to um, help avoid clumps and get, get this mixed together as evenly as possible. And I have the bowl on a scale so that I know exactly when I have poured in 600 milliliters of water. So after that's really well mixed, I let it cool to room temperature. And as I'm waiting for it to cool, I'll mix up the naruk. I'll use uh, 90 grams of naruk, 200 milliliters of water, and a quarter teaspoon of wine yeast. And uh, stir that well, and, and stir it a few times as we're waiting as well. Okay, so now um, it's cooled down. I'll add the Naruk mixture to the bomba. And I'm going to stir this very well. So I, I want it to be very smooth and liquid. Pour it into the jar. This is the first stage. And I've done this before. This is standard. So I, I, I want to I want to follow a very normal recipe so that I, I can see the effect at the end when I filter this recipe with different filter bags of different measurements. And I ferment this in a cool dark place. It's between 18 and 20 degrees Celsius. And you can see it's bubbling. There's lots of small bubbles. And I stir it twice a day for the first two days. So again, this is a perfectly normal recipe. I'm confident in this recipe. On uh, day two, we're going to do the second stage of brewing. That's with hard steamed rice, godubab. So I'm going to use 800 grams of sweet rice and I'll wash this rice gently for 15 minutes, repeatedly stirring it gently and then draining. And the water will get clearer as you do this. And the time is important. If you do it for longer than 15 minutes, you can start breaking apart the rice. You don't want that. So after the rice is washed, let it soak for more than three hours. And after it's soaked, 
port out again to drain. All, all these steps are important. It's important to soak and to drain it. And we're going to steam this. So I got the uh, water hot already, almost, almost boiling. And uh, now it is boiling. So steam that for 40 minutes. Lift it out carefully and spread it out to cool to room temperature. So this is the Godubop, the hard steamed rice. And after it's cooled down, we're going to add it to the first stage. And at this stage, I'm adding 300 milliliters of water to get a one-to-one -one rice to water ratio overall. I have a whole video on how this is measured. Um, so that's a good ratio to aim for is one-to-one -one rice to water ratio. And as usual, I like stirring with my hand, mixing it up with my hand. Looks good. So all the grains are separated and mixed evenly. The two stages are mixed together well. Put that into the cabinet again to ferment. And let's just watch it. So at the beginning, the top gets a bit dry, but it starts liquefying and you see the extra liquid on the bottom. And as time goes on, more and more rice falls down to the bottom. One of the ways you can measure the fermentation is by uh, using the match test. A match test means you, you light a match and uh, lower it into the jar and see if it goes out and how quickly it goes out. So I try that here and it goes out. That means there's active fermentation you need to let it ferment. The next day, day eight, I repeat the match test. And this time, okay, lower it pretty close to the surface and it does not go out. So that means the fermentation is less active. And you actually could bottle it now, but I'm going to wait because the temperatures are cool and uh, I have plenty of time. I have plenty of time. Um, I'm gonna let this continue. Um, the match test tells you pretty much the earliest day you could bottle it. And uh, I want to let this ferment longer and that's okay. So even though, even though the match test told me I could bottle it, I'm letting it continue. And as time goes on, the top actually gets more wet, more uh, liquid collects on the top as the rice falls. So it, it is uh, continuing to ferment. It, it is still worthwhile letting this continue a few more days. Now there's a distinct la uh, clear layer at the top now. Day 20, uh, we're going to bottle it. So here's a reminder of the four filter bags that I'm going to use. I'm boiling them all, two in each of these pots. This is going to be a more complicated filtering procedure because I want to use all four filters with this one jar. So that means that I'm going to have to divide this jar evenly among the four filters. So to start with, here's the 300 micron filter bag, and I'm gonna pass everything through the 300 micron filter bag. So I'm starting with the coarsest one. You're gonna see how well, this is my usual filter bag, how well it works with this brew. See if it's, no make sure it's normal, and I'll progress to the more, to the uh, finer filter bags. I measure the liquid here, there's um, 1920 grams. So I'll try to put 480 grams in each bottle. 
And there's 254 grams of jigami, that's the leaves left over after, uh, after this filtering. So that's pretty normal. I'm gonna put 480 grams of this first filtering into a bottle. So it'll be about half a bottle. Okay, so that's the most coarse filter, the first bottle I've, I'm done with. Now I'm going to filter this liquid through 200 micron filter. Hopefully it'll catch a bit more. And I, I did get 10 or 20 grams of additional jigami after this filtering. It's hard to measure precisely. So, but, so, but some, I, I did get more, more sediment out. So uh, put another 480 grams in the next, in the next bottle. So that's the second filtering. Third filtering is going to be the 150 micron filter. See what that looks like. Easy to squeeze that down. There's just a bit of extra sediment, maybe five grams. Hard to tell. It's stuck onto the filter bag. Did seem to catch something. And another 480 in there. Now we're down to the finest filter, the last filter, 80 microns. and put the rest in. Okay, it all squeeze out. And again, there's just a tiny bit stuck onto the bag. Again, probably less than five grams. And the rest goes into the fourth bottle. Okay, so, that so now we have four equal bottles that are were uh, filtered with uh, successively finer filters. And uh, you can see the first few bottles have already started settling. So I, I really want to observe this closely and see how much it settles um, over time. Is there any difference? So big question, will they settle the same? So bottled four days ago, uh, sediment has settled nicely and uh, actually equally in all four of these bottles, whether it was on the finest filter or the most coarse filter that I tried, whether it was, you know, around 300 microns or 80 microns, the amount of sediment seems to be the same and it seems to have settled the same way. But what I'm going to do now is um, mix these up and uh, and try them. So in this hand, I have the 300 micron filtered brew, and in this hand, I have the 80 micron filtered brew, and I'm going to compare the texture and taste now. They, they do have the same aroma. It uh, smelled good, like I said, like I said, when I, uh, when I bottled it, it smelled great. Uh, I didn't taste it at that time, but it smelled perfectly normal. And uh, let's, uh, let's compare them now. So pretty strong. I let this brew a long time. That's okay. So that's strong. Okay. So, um, They both taste equally strong. Flavor is the same as far as I can tell. Try 
starting to notice the texture. And also just look at the, look at what remains on the glass. You should be able to see particles on the glass. Is there any difference between them? Actually, visually, I have to say no. Yeah, it looks, looks the same to me. Um, if there is a difference in texture, uh, I don't think I would be able to tell the difference blindfolded. I know what these are, so maybe I think this one is a, a tiny bit thicker, but can't really tell the difference. And these are the extremes. So I'm going to taste the other two. This is the 200 micron and this is the uh, approximately 150 micron. look pretty similar too, but oh. maybe, maybe the finer ones are just a, a tiny bit, a tiny bit smoother. But the difference in the particles ha has to be very small. I, I can't, uh, might just be in my head. Um, but this is an important conclusion. What this means is that even though I'm using, I've been used to using roughly 300 micron, something larger than 200 microns, it didn't really matter that I was using that kind of filter bag it still worked. Um, the, for whatever reason, the particles that uh, are filtered out, the, the common particles produced by brewing Mockley, um, they're al already filtered out whether you're using uh, 80 micron or a 300 micron filter bag. It's roughly the same in terms of filtering capacity of Mockley. Maybe for other things, it's important, but uh, not important for for filtering Mockley. Now, um, important thing I should mention, so Mockley means roughly filtered, and that means Mockley is supposed to have some texture. Um, and this experiment was supposed to uh, tell me what the best kind of filter bag to use, what, what would be the micron measurement of the best filter bag to use. And uh, the result of this experiment, uh, seems to me to be that uh, it doesn't matter. You could have used any of these filter bags in this range from 300 microns to 80 microns, and you'd get something that tasted the same and had, as far as I can tell, the identical texture. So, so, that's a, so that's a result where, you know, put your mind at ease, you keep on using whatever filter bag you have that you like, and, uh, you don't have to, you don't have to get a new filter bag with a specific micron measurement because all of these are going to, going to do the job and, uh, and, and give you the result you want. And the, so, and this was a completely standard two-stage Mockley recipe. I brewed it for 20 days, completely standard, and the result tasted uh, um, totally normal. Uh, it was strong had milky aftertaste, you know, completely standard brew, nothing unusual about the brew, just wanted to test the filtering. And so I hope this was a useful result for you. I uh, hope you found this interesting. If you have any other ideas for, uh, for, for brewing, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, thank you for watching.